I want it. I've got it. I want it. I've got it. I want 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 it. I love that sound. I want it. I want it. Oh, mmm. Oh. Why do I love watching things get smushed in slow motion? Especially at the end when it does that little spoof. Oh. This looks like a Spider-Man thing. I don't know if that's the optimal way of taking them off. I'm not a cupping expert. Do I think it works? Hmm. I'm gonna assume that there's a decent amount of it that is a placebo effect, but there's also probably some benefit in terms of distracting you from the pain, also increasing circulation to the fascia and the tissues in that area. I have had one hour of sleep, one brownie, two shots of espresso, and I am ready to either fight God or die trying. I went through all of med school and residency without really drinking coffee. Now I am addicted and I am on the caffeine kick. By the way, if you haven't seen Bianca and Tessera on the channel, you need to. We played Would You Rather. This video is for Dr. Mike and Dr. Mike only, so if you're not Dr. Mike, keep scrolling. Please explain to me what the actual purpose of a uvula is other than being a very fancy, squishy chandelier for the back of my facial cavity. The little boxing bag that you're referring to in the back of your throat, also known as the palatine uvula, is really put there in order to prevent liquids and foods from entering our nasal cavities. And it lubricates the throat. And one of the most important things, in case you choke, it serves as your gag reflex. If y'all wanna know how to get a tan super fast, use some Pam Organical. No! Original. This is after 30 minutes, I'll get back to y'all in an hour. And this is after an hour. No! Why? You are not a chicken in a pot. Do not use Pam to cook yourself. In all seriousness, if you put oil, you're literally magnifying the rays that cause skin cancer. <laughs> Patients now are bringing in printouts of what they read online about their condition or potential condition. While a lot of the stuff you find online is not accurate, it fosters a good conversation so you understand how a doctor's mind works, so I'm all for it. As long as you bring it in and not just self-treat. I am literally falling apart. I had eye surgery, my teeth are falling apart. I had some like abnormal vein on my face. I had my shoulder injected because I had AC joint arthropathy. My low back has been acting up. I can't stand up without making sound effects because everything is just achy and sore. If I have like three glasses of alcohol, all of a sudden I can't function the next day. <sighs> Sigh. Hi, it's Babs and here's a quick health tip. Tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, Bragg's, in a cup of uh, room temperature water, right, taken right before bedtime, help with weight loss, help with your gut. Re unbelievable, it gives you a good night's sleep. Dude, she wrote everything that's troubling society right now. Weight loss, gut health, digestion, complexion, so much more. Imagine I spent 10 years educating myself on the pathophysiology and the pharmacology and the anatomy when all I had to go was and now I just solved all the problems that are ailing society. Why don't we just give this to everybody and, and end this? You're not gonna believe what just happened. Promise I am. I go to get my flu shot. Don't do me wrong here. And she goes, all right, well, do you want it in your left or right arm? I said, my left, um, but I have a long sleeve shirt on. So I don't know if it's gonna pull up all the way. I might just have to take my arm out if that's okay. And, she, and before I could even do that, she doesn't even answer me, really. She doesn't give me an option. She goes, oh, that's okay. This happens all the time, no issues. Through, she gives me the shot through my shirt. So now do I have like a piece of cotton in my bloodstream just floating around? No, this is not normal and you shouldn't be doing this. One, you have to look at where you're injecting. You have to see a clean surface. You have to clean it with a alcohol wipe in order to disinfect the area. Also, you wanna make sure you're not injecting into a mole, a already infected source. Like imagine underneath the shirt, she had a big cellulitis and infection there, an abscess, and now you're injecting into it. So like you gotta visualize where you're injecting, number one. Number two, to answer your question, you don't just have cotton floating around in your body or whatever material because likely the needle penetrated the holes of the fibers and didn't cut through the fiber. And even if it did, it 
wouldn't just be floating in your body. It would just be in that area and then your body would naturally push it out. While I don't think that's the biggest problem, I do think that's an irresponsible way to give a flu shot. If that really happened, I would like, probably complain about it because that's not the norm. There are 20 case reports in the literature of people whose colons have either exploded or caught fire during surgery. The colon makes methane and some hydrogen gas, and if that combines with oxygen and uh, a source of energy like a bovi or a laser, that can ignite. A bovi is the electrocautery tool that we sometimes use instead of a scalpel to cut tissue. Benefits of that is it actually cuts and cauterizes at the same time, so it minimizes bleeding. There's been a case where the surgeon caught fire and uh, another couple cases where the colon exploded and the patient died. Logically, it all makes sense and it could happen. I'll just put it this way. I don't, when I counsel my patients when they're going for pre-op screening and I counsel them on the procedure they're gonna get, I don't usually include exploding colon as part of the risks. How can your body replicate the feeling of falling from high altitude in a nightmare if you've never fallen like that? This is actually a really good and interesting question. So psychologists believe that the fear of falling is actually an evolutionary or innate trait within us to actually protect us. So it's different from the fear of heights, which some people have, but almost every human and almost every animal has the fear of falling. They've even tested this in infants as young as like six months old. If they put them near a glass floor that's a few feet up and then their mothers call them, the infants will actually avoid the glass floor or not come at all because even at that age without the experience of falling, they innately know that it's a dangerous thing. ASAP Science comes through again with some accurate info. Well done. Something I can add to this conversation because I work in a neonatology ward as a family medicine doctor, one of the reflexes we test in babies is called the Moreau reflex. Uh, it's kind of evil when you see us do it, when we essentially like rapidly drop the baby. You're not actually making contact with the baby's not falling, but you basically lower the baby really quickly. The baby kind of tries to grasp on and save itself because it has the innate survival method mechanism known as the Moreau reflex. So this is something we are innately born with. Another species this is very evident is puppies. A newborn puppy, you put them near stairs, they know not to go down the stairs. They don't just throw themselves down. Even though no one walked up to them and was like, hey, these are stairs. If you go down, gravity will go. Click here for me and a mortician partnering up watching Six Feet Under, or check me out another day in the life in my hospital on a COVID ward or unit or wing whichever you like. As always, stay happy and healthy.